it's Hoochie Daisy here, your favourite circus performer next door and professional OnlyFans creator. Welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered what a professional OnlyFans creator and hula hooper have in common? Yes? No? Well, today's your lucky day because we're diving deep into the similarities between these two unique worlds. So I think I had a bit of an easy ride when I transitioned from being a circus performer to being an OnlyFans creator. And that's because I'd already spent about five years running my own business. And I feel like there are so many crossovers between the two. Like you have to basically become Become good at everything. You have to be really good at doing admin, you've got to be hella good at sorting your own finances, getting clients, promoting yourself, taking photos, like the amount that I had to do to build my circus performer portfolio. Doing OnlyFans was basically exactly the same with a bit more boob. When I first started circus performing, I realized very early on that it's all about self-promoting and the way that I managed to get into the industry was through social media. So I spent so much time just like shouting about myself, plastering hula hooping videos everywhere, just promote, promote, promote. And again, it's basically exactly the same with OnlyFans. Like I just had to make it a bit more raunchy. Yeah, I feel like being a circus performer was just an introduction into running an OnlyFans business. I feel like a lot of the physical skills I've developed from training circus have been so applicable to my OnlyFans career, especially when it comes to like shooting interesting looking content, getting into fun positions. I mean, I'm also a partner acrobat, which means I train with big burly men for a living. I'm so used to being picked up and chucked around that when I'm doing that on camera, it's basically the same thing, just with a bit more penetration. Oh. <laughs> I also feel like being good at makeup and costume and changing your look is so, so important when you're doing OnlyFans because if someone's paying to subscribe to you, chances are they're only really subscribing to you. Like it's very rare that you'll get someone who has subscriptions to loads of different OnlyFans creators. That means you want to give them everything all in one go. You want to be the doctor, the teacher, the plumber, the, you know, dog, cat, and I feel like the shape-shifting techniques that I've learned from hula hooping has really helped me to create this fantasy of constant appearance changes, which keeps things really quite exciting. <laughs> However, makeup skills for stage versus on camera are very different. So that is something that I did have to learn to get better at. I feel like both jobs take a pretty high upfront investment. I think actually it was more expensive for me to be a circus performer than OnlyFans creator. But now as I'm up leveling, I am pouring more money into being an OnlyFans creator. So to give you a perspective like this costume probably would have cost 300 pounds to 400 pounds new and then it was like covered in stones now it's falling apart a little bit and in contrast like a lingerie set you're looking at like 50 quid or something really nice equally though if you want to be like a really good high-end sex worker investing in some nice latex is definitely worth it and i don't know if some of you have seen that pink latex outfit i wear but that cost about 700 pounds Luckily, and oh my God, I'm so thankful for this. I actually had a mega fan buy that for me because back when I started, I wouldn't have been able to afford that. I feel like both jobs can cause injury in different ways. They're both quite high risk physically. <laughs> um, if I'm hula hooping or doing acrobatics, like if I get an injury, I could be out of work for weeks, which is, you know, dangerous. Part of the reason why I decided to move away from doing circus performance and to OnlyFans is because my body was absolutely battered. And I'm not just talking about the cost of training circus, I'm talking about the cost of going in, doing a show, and then as soon as you're done, you jump in a car and you're driving for two to three hours home and your body just seizes up. And I feel like with OnlyFans, like it is still really physical, but for me, it feels more like a yoga session <laughs> because you get to like get into fun positions and move around and you're quite dynamic and it's quite free flowing. You're not tied to doing like a certain trick on stage. You can just kind of like, you know, put your leg behind your head or do something fun. I think another reason why the transition for me to OnlyFans was so smooth was because I'm very used to having a stage personality and a me personality. And I feel like the whole magic of being on stage as yourself is that you get to be you, but magnified. So I was really able to hone in on my favorite parts of myself or the most entertaining parts, the parts that people seem to love watching the most. And then 
magnify it. So it's not necessary that I'm like two different personalities. It's just that you gotta know when to switch on your show face. I actually think one of the biggest things I missed when I started doing OnlyFans was the international jobs that I used to get booked for as a circus performer. There's something really special about being flown out to a different country and picked up from the airport and treated like a queen. Just, you know, you get there, they feed you, they put you up in a really nice hotel and then you go home uh, and you perform. Obviously there's also the <laughs> work part of that. I was missing these international gigs and then I realized that I could just take myself on them. Like I didn't necessarily need to be booked by an agency and put through loads of different companies and paid pennies just to go to Spain for a day. I could just take myself there and just work in a different country for a bit. And that's been really quite special. And it's also really beneficial to the content to be able to just like fly yourself out somewhere and make sexy content in an exotic country. So with OnlyFans, I'm obviously not required to travel so much, but there's definitely a lot of travel involved in both. I find the, <laughs> the stress that I'm under is so much less when I'm doing OnlyFans. I think one of the main negatives of being a circus performer, bearing in mind, I still perform, I just do it so much less. Um, but being a circus performer, you're like constantly worrying about when your next gig's gonna come in and you're constantly relying on your agents. I have multiple agents, but you're constantly relying on them to book you. And on top of that, I have the worst stage fright in the world. Like I have really, really terrible stage fright. I'm talking about like, I'm gonna be sick, I go dizzy, I blank out. And not, I don't just like forget what I'm doing, but I forget what's happened. So I'll come off stage and I'll be like, I don't know, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through so much stress and anxiety? Like I used to get physically sick from how much stress I had. Like I used to get the worst stomach cramps. I remember these car journeys home where I'm just buckled over in, in agony because I had so much adrenaline going through me during the show that it was just this fat come down afterwards. So stress wise, I'm so much happier and more at peace doing the job that I'm doing now, which is OnlyFans and gigging for fun than back then where I was really tied to a contract. Why do we have to end on the sad one? Relationships and loneliness in both. I experienced so many of the same relationship issues as a circus performer as I do as an OnlyFans creator, which is hilarious because you'd think that there must be like a bit of a difference in the stigma. It was hard as circus performing because you're traveling so much. And I was lucky when I was, I don't know, for the best part of my career, I was in a relationship with my performance partner, which meant I got to travel with him and we got to actually be together and work together. And that's, that's like an ideal situation, but it's still kind of crap because you're then living, breathing, walking, talking, working together just constantly. Unfortunately, if you are dating your performance partner, it is a surefire way to becoming codependent because your entire lives are enmeshed. Like you don't have your own hobbies or interests or anything because your life is circus. But during the periods of time where I wasn't dating as a circus performer, I found it really hard to hold down anything substantial and not just because I was never around, but also because my lifestyle was really, really exciting and pretty glamorous, especially from the outside looking in. It looks like I'm kind of living the dream. And I found some partners would find it difficult to not feel jealous or insecure or not good enough, especially if I'm dating people who aren't circus. Being a circus performer and dating in the circus world is a f nightmare. And I feel like this is so similar to being an OnlyFans creator because it seems to me that the only really successful relationships I see with my peers and industry professionals are when you get two creators that are together because they create content together, they understand the game, they understand the work schedule and how it all functions. So they're a lot more forgiving and lenient with each other. The lifestyle. Being a circus performer is like being in a cult. <laughs> and I, I feel like that's the same with any like intensely specialist world. I don't know, I think, I feel like climbers get it a lot. I've like dipped my toe into the climbing scene and I've noticed it a lot more. But it is just this thing where when you meet other people in your scene, it's really quite nice because you get to bond, you get to talk about the experiences. Like there's nothing that I love more than going on a gig and sharing gossip with your other circus friends. I, I love a good backstage gossip. <laughs> And it's quite bad because it's like, you know, you probably shouldn't be spending your time bitching about people. But if you haven't seen someone for like three months and then you see them and you're like, oh my God, did you hear that this person and this person? And it's fun. 
I know. The social aspect of both of these worlds is really enmeshed. And it's also really quite incestuous. I'm not sure who's worse, circus performers or OnlyFans creators. I actually feel like circus performers are worse because at least OnlyFans creators are honest about it and they test and they're, you know, communicative and consenting and all that. Whereas circus performers are just like rabbits. Trying to have friends outside of these two worlds has always proven to be a little bit difficult. And not just because like, it's hard to connect with them. But I also, for me, the most enjoyable way that I can spend my time is with people who have similar goals and hobbies and interests. If I'm trying to be friends with people outside of these worlds, I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know nothing else really interests me. I just want to train circus and shoot porn <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's what I enjoy doing, so I want to be friends with people who enjoy doing that too. Phew! And that is the end of that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure there's loads more to be said about these two professions, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment them below. Meanwhile, check out my next video where I talk about all the negative things about dating as an OnlyFans creator. Mm -hmm.